Hello, everyone. I'm Arashish Mishra. I work in the AI data and in-memory technologies team for the Oracle database. Today, I'll talk to you about AI vector search, a cool new feature in Oracle Database 23 AI, which can power the modern enterprise. Let's start with an overview of what AI vector search is all about. Every day, you find yourself in situations where you're searching for something. For example, you saw a movie over the weekend, and you want to recommend that to your friend. You can remember the plot, but you can't remember the name of the movie. You're exercising in the gym. You hear a song. You can even hum a few bars, but you don't know the name of the title or the artist. You visit your friend's place and like their couch, but they don't remember where they purchased it. All of these are scenarios where you want to search for something semantically. This is where AI vector search comes in. It's an innovative technology which can enhance your search results by allowing you to search on semantics and not precise keywords. This has become a critical component of the modern Gen AI ecosystem. Vectors represent semantics of unstructured data. Think images, documents, videos. As the name suggests, a vector is an array of numbers or dimensions which are used to capture key features of your data. Vectors represent the semantic content of the data and not the words, not the pixel values. Typically, you use machine learning embedding models to generate vectors from your data. A popular text embedding model is called BERT, and a popular image embedding model is called ResNet. Vectors have this key property that distance between vectors is a proxy for similarity. This means more similar to entities are, the shorter the distance between those vectors. Now here's an example. Imagine a two-dimensional vector representation of all these words, and you can see animals in one quadrant, cities in another, fruits in another, and states in another. Now, if you pick the words wolf and lion, since they're both animals, the distance between the vectors is going to be small. But wolf and apple is going to have a larger vector distance because they are dissimilar. There are several distance metrics that people use to compute distances between vectors. The most popular one is probably Euclidean and cosine distance. Now, when you think of large-scale enterprises, they can greatly benefit by combining the traditional searches on business data with AI vector-powered similarity searches. Let's look at a typical example of how people have tried to solve this problem. You have your business database containing all your enterprise data. You get a dedicated vector database, and you move data from your business database to the vector database, and then do similarity such as there, get the results back, and return to the user. Now, this has many challenges. It can cause data staleness. It adds complexity of managing two separate software stacks. It compromises your security model and a host of other issues. A better solution is to use a converged AI business database where you have added AI vector search to your business database. So no need of replicating data and worrying about data divergence, data inconsistency. And this is what Oracle does with AI vector search. An enterprise grade converged database like Oracle is all you need. AI vector search can also improve your interactions with large language models by allowing you to augment those interactions with private enterprise specific business data. This can significantly enhance the capabilities of your Gen AI applications. The main problem with LLMs is hallucination, which means that if you ask it a question about something it's not trained on, it's likely to give you inaccurate responses. Using a vector search capability, you can augment the prompt by giving the LLM business data in a design pattern called retrieval augmented generation which allows the LLM to produce more accurate responses. By giving it the most relevant content, you also stay within the LLM's token limit and it becomes more cost-effective. So on one hand, you have your LLM, which is a broad range of data from the internet. That's what it's been trained on, but it's as of a point in time. You add vector search, which can give relevant content from your private business enterprise data, and you just get better business outcomes. Now let's look at this RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation flow in detail, you, the user, have a question which is first encoded into a vector 
and sent to AI Vector Search, which can then search through all your documents, your private documents, and find relevant enterprise-specific content. That content, along with the question, is fed to the LLM. And that's the augmentation part. And then the LLM can use this content along with all of the knowledge it's trained on to give you a much more accurate answer. That's how RAG can improve your enterprise use cases. And Vector Search has a wide range of applications. You can use that in search engines. For example, you can use it to do service request matching, where a bunch of service requests can be grouped together and assigned to one expert. You can do personalized content delivery and recommendation systems. You can even do sentiment analysis of user posts in social media settings. And there are a variety of other use cases that are illustrated in this slide. AI vector search inherently is response time critical. You want fast answers. And that's kind of like real-time OLTP. Let's take the example of a financial transaction. You want to detect whether it's fraudulent or not. You want that to happen real time. Or let's say you are searching for a person of interest as a law enforcement agency. You want that to happen real time. And this plays to Oracle's key strengths, 24-7, 365 availability, petabyte scalability, millions of transactions of second, and fully secure. We expect many of Oracle's mission-critical OLTP use cases to augment with AI vector search in the future. Now let's take a look under the hood and see how this all works within the Oracle database. So the AI vector search capabilities are fully integrated into Oracle Database 23 AI. It's designed to be very simple to use and easy to understand. First, we have SQL capabilities to do vector generation within the database. We have a new vector type to store vector embeddings in the database. We have new SQL syntax and functions to allow you to express similarity searches with ease. You can also use our approximate search indexes to make your searches faster. And finally, you can power Gen AI pipelines using our PLSQL packages and our tight third-party framework integrations. Let's start off by looking at how you can generate vectors right within the database. So we have a DBMS data mining package which we have augmented with a special procedure, you can load open source Onyx embedding models. Onyx stands for Open Neural Network Exchange. It allows you to represent embedding models, which you can load into the database. Then you can use a vector embedding SQL function to leverage those Onyx models to generate vectors for your unstructured data. Here's an example. You have a query image of a house, and you want to find similar houses inside your data set. You first load the Onyx model called ResNet50 in this case, pass it to the vector embedding function along with the query image. You get a vector that you can then pass into your database, which has already embedded the data set of house images using the same vector embedding function and the same Onyx model, ResNet50. And then AI vector search can do the magic and give you the top two matches of houses which look like your query image. That's the pipeline. Next, let's look at the vector data type. I have a table of images. We have an ID column, the image column stored as a blob, and the image vector. There's a vector keyword, and then you can optionally specify the number of dimensions of the vector and what format you want to store it in. You can store it as an int 8, which is a one byte integer representation, or more commonly, float 32, which is four byte floating point, or float 64 as well. Now you can also specify the same column by just using the flexible vector keyword. No need to specify the dimension format or dimension count. Now, why is this useful? Think of the case where today you're using one embedding model for your data, but tomorrow you want to use a better embedding model. The size of vectors produced by those two models could be different, but you don't necessarily want to go and change your application to account for that. So this Vector only keyword allows for a flexible specification and allows you to evolve your embedding models over time. Next is the vector distance function. As mentioned previously, you can use vector distance to gauge similarity. You can pass in two vectors to the distance function, and you can also specify the distance metric. Different embedding models are tuned for different distance functions, but the concept is still the same. The more similar two entities are, the shorter the vector distance between them. 
Uh, here's a list of distance functions we support. Uh, cosine distance is the default for all of these functions so that you don't have to specify it in vector distance. Next, let's look at a simple example of how you can search using this vector distance. Typically, you will use vector search to find top k closest matches to a given query item. In this case, let's say you have your resume. You have a job site which has job postings. Imagine each job posting description has been vectorized and you can vectorize your resume as well. Now you can write a SQL like this, where you're searching in the job postings table. You want to add a filter on your preferred cities. So you have where city in, select the preferred cities for a particular applicant. You can order by vector distance, comparing the job description vector and your provided resume vector. It's going to order the distance for all those job postings and then fetch the top 10 closest matches. This is a simple pipeline SQL in which you could combine applicant data, job data, and AI vector search. It's a single integrated solution with full data consistency. And anyone can learn this in under 30 minutes. It's as simple as that. Now, if you have a small data set, it's okay to do this exact search comparing the query vector with every vector in your data set. But of course, as data sets increase in size, this operation can become very slow. It will still be 100% accurate, but it will be very slow. That's why we provide new vector indexes that can trade off some search quality or accuracy for search speed. Now, typically, these indexes have vectors clustered by similarity so that you can get high accuracy, and it uses greedy techniques, and hence the search is approximate in nature. So there are two categories of vector indexes. First, we have an in-memory index called a neighbor graph index. The idea is straightforward. You have vertices representing vectors, and two vertices have an edge between them if the vectors are more similar entities. It's an in-memory only index, which is highly efficient for high accuracy as well as speed. The second index is called a neighbor partition vector index, which is essentially a partition-based index where vectors are grouped by similarity, and then that group of vectors is stored in a table partition. Now, this is a scale-out index. You use it if your data set cannot fit in memory, and it's fully transactionally consistent as well. Let's take a look at how the neighbor partition vector index can power similarity searches. Let's say you have a two-dimensional data set again, and I've colored the points for easier visualization. You first group those vectors into clusters or partitions using something like Oracle K-means clustering algorithm. Then given a query vector, you first compute the distances to all the centroids. That's the white dots in those clusters. Based on that, you pick the two closest clusters to explore further. Within that, you do an exhaustive search and find your top five matches. That's the white boxes that you can see. But observe that the orange point in cluster four, which I've highlighted with a red box, is actually closer to the query vector than the white point, which is again highlighted with a red box. But because we chose to explore only two clusters, we missed that point. And that kind of highlights the nature of the query. You got a fast result, but you missed some matches. The in-memory neighbor graph index implements HNSW index called Hierarchical Navigable Small Worlds Index. That's considered the gold standard in vector indexing literature. It's designed for speed and accuracy. It's a multi-layer index where each layer is a neighbor graph. The lowest layer contains all of the vertices, and higher layers contain a decaying fraction of those vertices. Search is inherently greedy in nature. Given a query vector, you find a random entry point and find the closest neighbor to the query vector. Then use that to go down. You repeat this process going down the layers until you reach the lowest layer, and you do a more sophisticated top case search to find your best closest matches. Here's the syntax for that. We have introduced a vector keyword in create index. So you do now do create vector index. You specify the name of the index, photo index, on what table, customer, and what column, the photo vector. Then you specify the organization. That's what lets you choose between the two types of indexes, in-memory neighbor graph and neighbor partition indexes. And you can optionally specify the distance metric as well. Choosing the organization is simple. As I mentioned, if your data set fits in memory, choose in-memory neighbor graph index. 
that's really fast and really accurate. But if your data won't fit in memory, you have a large data set, you can use the neighbor partitions index that's designed for scale out. The distance class is optional, the default is cosine. And as a rule of thumb, you should choose a distance function that is compatible with the embedding model you use to generate your vectors. Now let's look at how you can specify a keyword, the approximate keyword, to use approximate queries. This is done by adding the approximate keyword in the fetch first class. Now previously, we just had fetch first five rows only. By adding the approximate keyword, you're telling the optimizer that, hey, try to use a vector index for an approximate search. Now note that even if you specify approximate, the optimizer may choose to ignore that because of its costing decisions. For example, when joins are involved or when predicates are there. So don't worry about that. We talked about accuracy. It's typically an indicator of what is the quality of your search result. For example, if an exact search of a query returns five IDs, one, three, five, seven, nine, and the index approximate search returns one, five, seven, nine, and 11, essentially missing the ID three, then you got four out of five matches. So the accuracy is 80%. We allow users to specify a target accuracy both at index creation and at index uh, at query SQL time. The SQL specification can override the default index choice. Now, we believe that specifying accuracy is much more intuitive than users having to tune low-level accuracy parameters, which is, by the way, what other database vendors ask you to do today. Think of knowing the speed of the car using the speedometer versus computing the speed from the engine RPM or the fuel burn rate. That's obviously more complicated. And accuracy is a very important concept because it varies by application. You may have a higher accuracy, but you will pay for it with a slower query. But that's okay. You may have a law, law enforcement use case where you need higher accuracy to find a person of interest match as opposed to an online recommendation for matching items, which can be less accurate, but needs to be fast. So accuracy is really an important concept in AI vector search. And you can specify that during create vector index using the width target accuracy and a percent clause. And we will tune the parameters accordingly. And you can also specify that query time using the same width target accuracy clause. We do provide the parameters clause as well. So if you're an advanced user, you can tune the index settings that way. Okay, enterprise data is often normalized. So doing vector search over joins is highly critical for enterprise use cases. Let's look at an example where you have three tables, a table of authors, books by authors, and pages within the books. And let's say you have embedded the content of every page using a vector. So let's call that column the vector column, the page vector. Now let's say you have a query where you're returning the top five books containing your natural language prompt or utterance, and you want to search where the genre of the book is fiction and the author of the book is from India. And that's your query, where you're joining authors, books, and pages, where authors and books are joined on author ID, books and pages are joined on book ID, you're filtering the genre for fiction, you're filtering the author country for India, and then you're ordering by vector distance between the page vector and the vector for your natural language prompt. And then you're fetching approximate first five rows only. Here's how the plan is going to look. You have the join between the authors and the books with the filters applied. Then you join that with a similar search on pages. That's the vector distance search. You join it together and then you can do top K. You need an enterprise grade cost-based optimizer to figure out the join order, the vector index usage or not, the ordering of filters to apply, and no purpose-built vector database can achieve this today. Another concept in the space of vector search is multi-vector queries. Multi-vector is a scenario where you have multiple vectors representing one entity. So the typical example is when you have a text document where every paragraph can be translated into a vector. Now here's an example on a two-dimensional data set. You have your documents, you pass it through a chunker, then use the embedding model to generate vectors for each chunk. So you can see the red points are vectors for the red document, the green ones are for the green document, and the blue ones are for the blue document. Now, given a query vector, you can find the closest chunk of the closest vector per document. This is the closest red vector, the closest green vector, 
and the closest blue vector. Now note that we have another red chunk, which is actually closer to the query vector, but you may not want that because you want a diverse query result. And there are many such other use cases where let's say a single person has many photos and you want to find similar uh, person based people based on a particular photo. We have special syntax to enable this fine grain multi-vector search, where let's say you want to find top 10 documents, but the documents contain chunks similar to your query vector, and you want to return two chunks per document. So here's the query. You have the document name and the chunk text being projected and a join between the docs table and the chunks table on doc ID. And then you order the result by the chunk vector and the query vectors vector distance. This is the new class where you can partition the result by document ID. So you create these 10 groups of document IDs, which are ordered by the closest chunk. And within each group, you can then pick two chunks, which are close the one top and the second top closest chunks and return to the user. This is an extension to the role limiting syntax that allows you to partition within that. Next, a key differentiator for Oracle is its strong transactional consistency guarantees because that's what allows enterprises to perform searches on their latest data. The neighbor partition vector indexes are fully transactionally consistent and maintained synchronously with DMLs. This means that your results are not only fast, but they're also transactionally consistent, which is what any enterprise needs. You can also scale out vector processing by using RAC, real application clusters, with full data consistency. You can offload vector processing capabilities to smart exadata storage software, which can make your queries run more faster. And Oracle Vector Search is fully integrated with an array of enterprise grade features that Oracle database already has. So sharding, parallel execution, partitioning, analytics, security, all of it is compatible with AI Vector Search. Another key capability of AI Vector Search is that it can power a Gen AI pipeline. So you have your data sources, which can be pretty much anything. It can be a database, a CSV file, a, a Twitter handle. You usually use a document loader to bring those documents in. You can then transform those documents. For example, you can summarize them. You can split them. You can generate vectors for them using an embedding model, store it in a vector database. Then the user can do similarity searches on that or use a RAG design pattern to interact with LLMs. Using Oracle 23 AI database and AI vector search in that, you can fully process the Gen AI pipeline. And in, on top, we also provide tight integration with third-party frameworks like Langchain and Llama Index to enable developers to build more sophisticated applications. Okay, now let's look at a demo of how this all works. It's a demo where you, you are going to search for movies based on natural language. So you ask a question to the app. It will embed the question using Coher's English embedding model. It's going to then do AI vector search on the movie's data set, which has already been vectorized. You can add optional relational predicates showing the converged processing capabilities. And then AI vector search is going to retrieve your top 10 matches that you can display on a dashboard. The AI vector search along with the converged processing is all that happens inside Oracle database in this demo. Here's the landing page of the demo. Inside the search, you can see the ability to provide filters. Those are your relational filters on the movie year, the genre of the movie, the nominations the movie received, and the awards the movie received, and a space for providing your natural language prompt, and the choice between text theme search and AI vector search. So let's start by asking a question to find motivational movies about athletics. And let's use the text theme search. Here are the matches. You can see Goodbye Columbus, The Formula, and Batman Returns. Hmm. Batman Returns is not a motivational movie about athletics. So let's see why that was returned by text theme search. So you can see the content here that was used to vectorize the document and just represent the movie. And you can see a sentence there, fleshing out the penguin's motivations and master plans. Penguin is a Batman villain. And there's the keyword motivations. And I'm searching for motivational movies. So text theme search latched on that. And hence, this movie was returned. Now let's try the same thing with vector search. And you see much more relevant results. The dodecapentathlon, the champions movie, hustle, which are all athletic movies about athletics. Now let's add, in addition to vector search, 
some relational predicates where I'm looking for movies in the year 2023 and the genre is sport. And now here are the matches. All are movies from 2023. Champions, Sweetwater, 80 for Brady. And that shows that AI vector search can not only capture semantics better than text theme search, it can also be easily combined with other relational predicates to perform more sophisticated information retrieval. The summary, Oracle AI vector search has all the building blocks to power the modern enterprise. It's seamlessly integrated with all of Oracle 23 AI's relevant and enterprise grade features. You can perform converged SQL processing, which allows you to do AI powered vector search on your business data. And you can combine that with relational predicates, document predicates, spatial predicates, and many more domains, all within one database. No need to get multiple single purpose databases and worry about keeping them consistent. We have an advanced data engine with approximate indexing capabilities, in-memory processing capabilities, and usage of partitioning and compression in different places. We have industry-leading scalability through rack and sharding, Exadata scale out as well. And finally, we allow users to orchestrate Gen AI pipelines either natively in the database or through integrated third-party frameworks. Thank you for listening. I'm Arshish Mishra. Here's my email and my LinkedIn. Thank you.